This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video has been in the pipeline for a little bit of time, I'm not gonna lie, I've been really busy, but today we're finally getting down to it. Now, a few people have asked me about this in the past and I thought, let's make a video on it. Today I wanna talk about, as you may have seen from the title and the thumbnail, I would like to talk to you about different Monstera Deliciosa sports which we'll get into, of course, but it's mainly because a lot of people ask me about a lot of different types of Monsteras, and yeah, there are a lot, there are a lot. I didn't actually realize that there's this many, and to be honest, I haven't covered them all in this video. So you may see this video today, and you might be thinking, okay, I can't wait for her to talk about this plant. I might not know about it, or I might not have included it. There's so many, and they pop up all the time. Now, the brief problem we have, and I've mentioned this on videos before, is that some people just make up dumb names when they don't need to exist, for example. Like a normal variegated monstera that's just presenting slightly differently and it's done it on one leaf, now it's this weird name. It's dumb, we're not doing that in here today. Hopefully I've garnered a list of different types of monstera that I think are legit and I think they are sports. I might get things wrong, so please take that with a pinch of salt. Let's just get down to it. So if you are in the market for different Monstera types and you're using this video as sort of inspiration, if you will, then please feel free to get a notepad and pen. A lot of people tell me that that's really, really useful. So if you see something in this video and you think, hmm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up after this video and I want to see if it's purchasable or where I can get it or whatever, then feel free to get a notepad and pen and write them down. So I have my laptop in front of me. So if you see me looking down at any point, that is what I'm doing. Hopefully it is not too distracting for you. But the first thing I want to basically talk about very quickly is what is a sport? What is a sport? And I don't mean in terms of tennis, badminton or hockey. I mean in terms of botany. What is a sport? Basically, in the world of botany, a sport literally means a genetic mutation. This could be, for example, if a plant shows variegation or it's throwing out leaves that are a different shape than they normally are or something like that. This is pretty consistent across the plant, right? It's not just a random leaf and then it's gone back to normal. That's not what we're doing here today. Too many people nowadays are selling something as a sport because the plant gave them a wonky leaf or like a tiny little variegation spot on the leaf. Now I've made an Instagram post about this. It basically says that it's bullshit. So... <laughs> There you go, that's my opinion on that. So I'm defining a sport in this case as something that is kind of consistent and it persists across the plant, it's not a random leaf. We need to be doing less of that, quite honestly. We need to be doing less of that. Monstera deliciosa, different types, different sports. Let's go. And again, I have my laptop right here and I'm looking down and I have a picture of the plant and I want to talk to you about it. So the first plant on my list today is the Monstera Deliciosa Small Form, also known as Borzigiana. It does have another name and I can't remember what it was. And I think it's going through the process of being formally identified. I can't remember. I might be wrong. So this plant is basically, it's its just the most common form of Monstera you can get. I would almost tell you that it was more common than actually the large form because we see the large form a little bit less and I'll get onto that in a moment. But this is the very typical Monstera that you see in garden centers. It does grow very compact. It grows vertically. It grows in vines and it grows in a very obvious vining way. Usually you can have small ones in stores, but they will get to a certain point and they will, you know, they get so large and they have to be put on a pole. They can't really survive without, they're just going to topple over. Nearly everyone that even has house plants or starts out with plants has one. It's pretty much the classic cut Monstera. Moving on from that, of course, you have the Monstera Deliciosa large form. Now, <sighs> Everyone says, yes, well, large form doesn't exist because it hasn't been formally whatever and really on record there's no distinction between small and large, blah, 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 blah. I get it, but you're wrong, okay? Think of me what you will, but seriously, they are different and there will be a time where it will be recognized for being different because let me tell you, these plants are very different. A lot of us kind of go with that and we just accept that, you know, botany and registration and stuff is a little bit behind, I guess. But for the purpose of this video, there are two forms and this is large form. What is different? Basically, this one grows, it grows a little bit more like a tree. Actually, it doesn't really vine and it gets a lot of fenestrations in the leaf. It gets holes as well. Not that you can't get holes in the small form, you can, but this one, it will happen way faster. The main difference between, you know, small form and large form is that the large form's leaves can be like three foot across. Three feet. 
Don't tell me that that is the same as a regular green monstera, because it ain't. It just ain't. I'm sorry, it ain't. And what I will say is the two monstera I've just shown you, so the large and the small form, they are what we're going to call the base for a lot of the sports, basically any sport, to be honest. They're either large underneath or they're small underneath. And when we go through them, I'm going to try and tell you which one they are. I might get it wrong. Some, I think I've had to guess as to whether I think it's large or small, or it's just unknown. I will tell you as we go, but please keep in mind, I might get a little bit wrong because a lot of these sports they're not necessarily releasing whether it's large or small form as to what the sport is so you kind of have to guess anyway you'll see what i mean the first sport is probably the obvious but we have to start with it this is the monstera albo small form it's classic it's the most sought after monstera deliciosa there is it just is i don't know when it's ever going to stop i think it's cool i think it's a beautiful plant it's gorgeous this one because it inherits from the small form that is the base it is good for smaller spaces it grows more like a vine you can put it up a pole it's going to be a little bit more tall and a little bit uh, narrower, you could say, in appearance, especially if you get multiple vines around a pole. Not only that, but the variegation on this one, the white is like white. It is brilliant white. Not all variegates of Monstera are brilliant white, and we will get into it, but it's a really, really pretty white colour. Everyone wants it. You can probably find it on the internet varying price points in various prices, but it's a lovely one, and it's, it's, just, it's just classic, isn't it really? It's classic. After that, this one is notoriously hard to find, but you have the large form white variegade, so the large form albo. If I had a penny for every time on the internet I've seen someone trying to sell one of these and it's not large form, that's something you really have to be careful of. Very, very, very difficult that you see a lot, a lot, a lot of people doing that. And honestly, I'm showing you a picture next to me, but I can't guarantee you that that is large form that I'm showing you because I think they're pretty rare, guys. And people that say they have them don't have them. The picture that I'm looking at, which I, I probably haven't shown you, I don't know. I can already see it's not large form, but it does have holes and it does have fenestrations and it does look quite big, but it's not large form. Really be careful if you're looking for one of these, like really, really, really be careful. Get, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth opinions on these because they're difficult to find. They don't just pop up. Please be very careful because they're going to cost a lot more than what a small form would. So if you want one, maybe make sure that that's actually definitely what you want or you think, you know, I could just save a lot of money and go for the small form. It's whatever you want and I encourage you to get what you want. I'm just saying be very, very careful because I don't want anybody to be ripped off. Next on the list, we have the Monstera Aurea small form. So this is like the white, except it's yellow. So its base is small form. Obviously, again, small spaces, grows tall, grows slim, all that good stuff. The plant, in my experience, needs reasonably good light to throw a good yellow. If you don't have enough light, this yellow is going to come off very lime green. So if you're having that problem, bump the light. Not only that, but this variegation is what I like to refer to as Polaroid variegation. In the case of the elbow, when that leaf develops, you can see the white, right, when the leaf unfurls, and that's there, that's permanent, that's great. This is not quite the case. You can sort of see it, but that yellow develops over time, very much like a Polaroid would if you took a Polaroid picture and you left it to develop. The variegation does the same thing. So if I say Polaroid throughout this video, think of that. That's what I mean. It just develops over time, and if you don't boost the light enough, it's not going to fully develop. It's a really, really nice plant. It's just, it depends whether you like yellow. A lot of people don't. And if you can put up with the Polaroid, if you have a lower light scenario, then maybe the yellow stuff is not as good for you. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. Not only that, but Squarespace helps me optimize my visibility on the internet by showing me what people are searching for in order to find my shop. For example, here you can see various ways of Googling my shop name, plus a search for a specific houseplant, which is the Philodendron Whipple Way, which was a bit of a surprise to me, actually. If you want to create Create a really sleek, efficient website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video.
Next on the list, we have the Monstera Aurea large form. Can you see where this is going? Now, I have noticed that this particular form is labeled, what is it, Yellow Marilyn? I think that is the trade name it's going by. I hope it's not a bullshit name. I'm throwing it out there now in this video because I'm not 100% going to be honest with you. It could just be that if you see Monstera Yellow Marilyn, it means large form Aurea. So, yeah, variegation, the same. It's Polaroid. It does take a bit of a boost to bring it out. I know I've definitely had that with mine if you don't like it maybe don't go for that if you're thinking oh i don't really don't really want to have to you know wait for things to develop i just want it to look good all the time maybe this isn't one for you of course as well if you don't have a lot of space i don't advise these i really don't advise a large form if anybody's actually toyed around and bought some large form for their house let me know how it went because i think in 2020 there was a bit of a surge in them i think we all decided that we really liked them because we got that jungle vibe for our houses like really quick because you just click and then there's a tree in your living room which which is great but I think this year and some of last year a lot of people start to sell them because they realize that it is quite a, an undertaking should we say getting a large form so if you've got the space literally go for it that said that said, a lot of you probably have large form Monstera and aren't really thinking about that yet I don't know, I'd love to know how big you intend to grow your plant when it is this plant. I'm talking about the Monstera Thai Constellation, which has its base as large form. I don't know if everybody knows that or not, but if you have a Thai at home and you bought a cute little cutesy one, your base is large form. So that big tree that you might have seen your friend like get rid of because they bought it and it was just too much, they had to start charging it rent or whatever. If you have a Thai, that's where you got. So I hope you've got the space basically. I don't think everybody knows that. I know my parents bought one. I can't remember if I told them it was large form or anything. I don't think they cared at the time, but my parents bought one maybe about 60 centimeters high, two foot high, something like that. They've got it on a pole, but it is, it's a tree. It's a tree. I'm surprised it's actually stayed on the pole because they tend not to. It's massive, guys. It's massive. Just something to be aware of if you have large form. But yeah, this variegation is lovely and this is great if you don't want to worry about the plant reverting because the variegation that you see, it's a really nice, beautiful speckled pattern. It's why they call it Thai Constellation because the variegation makes a speckled pattern. It's very, very pretty. The only thing I'll say is the variegation isn't super white. It's not the same as the elbow. It is more of a cream color, which is not a bad thing. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. In terms of the pattern of variegation, obviously it's speckled, you can get chunks of it so you can get sectoral chunks but I just want you to know that if you buy this plant don't go in expecting them because it's chaotic of course like with everything but you're not likely to get them you can get them but don't buy the plant expecting to get them maybe you want the album maybe you're not getting the right plant for you if you want that out of the plant this is very very good if you don't want to watch something revert it's fantastic the plant is nearly always going to be speckled but I just wanted to note that because I don't think everyone knows it's large and I I don't know if people are expecting big chunks of variegation or they're expecting it to be really white because I'm pretty sure a lot of people when they take photo of these on Instagram, you know, we all do it. I'm not shitting on anyone. We manipulate things a bit and I think sometimes the, the white looks whiter than it is. So quick note on the tie, there is supposed to be a dwarf version of this. I saw it myself in 2020 when I went to Thailand way before it even was going to be coming out. They're rumored to be coming. I, do I have written down when? No. I don't think it's been released yet, but basically there is a dwarf version of this plant that I will explain later because we actually have something further down that is similar. So I'll explain about that, but just log it in your brain that there is a miniature version coming out that a lot of you might be interested in if you don't want a big, you know, big tree in your house. Moving on from that, we have the Monstera Tricolor, better known as the Monstera Miracle. What is it, you ask? It is essentially a Thai constellation with yellow variegation. So obviously it's got its green base, which is large form, again, because it comes from the Thai. It is a Thai and it has its white variegation, but it also has yellow. So that's what that is. I don't know how common these are. I suspect that they really aren't. Now, I've seen beautiful pictures of these, probably the one I'm showing you, and I've also seen some not good pictures of these. I think it's down to individual specimens as to whether they're worth it. I wouldn't judge it by just one photo. If you want one of these, couldn't tell you how much they are. I, I assume they're a lot of money, to be honest. That's that. Don't have anything to say about it other than it's a yellow variegated tie because we've talked about the tie and obviously that applies to this one. So moving on from that, we have, I have one of these actually. We have the Monstera variegated, I don't think it has a name, but the variegation is essentially green on green. So when you see a variegated portion of the leaf, it's not white, it's not yellow, it's lime green, sort of lime green. 
not lime, but it, it, it's green. I do have one of these. I did a trade for it a while ago and I don't know if it's small or large foam. I don't think it matters. I think you can probably get both of these anyway. I think Ben reckons it's large, but I'm sure it's small, you know, the one I've got. Green and green variegation. This is definitely Polaroid variegation, meaning that it develops. And I tell you something, it is so hard to see the variegation when this is developing. If you think you've got a problem looking for the yellow, looking for the green, oh my God, literally. Takes forever, takes forever. But again, bump the light, you'll see it better. Don't go cutting things and thinking that something's reverted until it fully hardens because mm, you might be chucking out some good shit. You feel me? Moving on from that, and this looks to be, from the photograph, it looks to be inheriting from a large form. So the base being a large form Monstera. This is Monstera Lime Deliciosa. I don't know how valid it is. Just putting it out there. I think, and I, I don't own this, I've been sent this. This variegation is very likely to be Polaroid. And it looks as though it turns to a lime green when it hardens off. And there's a photograph here. And the photograph I find very interesting because there is so a leaf or two leaves on the left and a leaf on the right. Now the leaf on the right, due to the color of the green, makes me think it's a new leaf, right? And this is not working how I expected to. It looks like it comes in lighter and then it hardens down to a lime green. So I find that really, really interesting. I can't tell you anything about it other than it's not the same as green on green. This is different. So I, I do think it's valid, if you know what I mean. It looks as though it comes in light colored and then fades down, but I could be wrong. Again, I'm just going up this single photograph. Moving on, we have the absolutely beloved at the minute. It's gone through the roof. This is the Monstera Mint. And I'm looking at a picture now. I have one of these. I believe I have small form, but I think think there is both large form and small form available, but I think the large form is super rare, as with anything, because large form just generally isn't traded as much. Unless it's a tie, it's probably not happening. So the main one that you're getting circulating at the minute is small form, and I'm so sure it's the one I have just by the way it grows. If you have invested in one of these, honestly don't be disheartened if you're thinking, oh well, you know, the large form is rarer and I thought I bought large form and I haven't. Honestly, do not despair. Take normal Deliciosa, where you've got the large and the small. Take the elbow. People want small form, guys. Like, I like big plants. I do. It's just my taste. I'd rather have five big plants than, you know, 50 small ones. But most people love compact plants because they either have a lot of plants in one space or they have small spaces. So if you bought a mint or any plant or whatever, thinking it's large and actually it's small, that's honestly not the worst thing at all. It's not the worst thing at all because I guarantee you people will want the small form more. So there's a little bit of a seller's tip, I guess, if you're wanting to go for something. Maybe you want to buy a mint, for example. Honestly, as a seller, you don't have to take my advice, but the small form's probably better because not many people, as we've seen, want trees in their houses. I would love to do it. I'm considering doing it. But not everyone does, you know, want that. So there's just something to consider. Beautiful plant, by the way. Obviously, it's variegated. It hardens off to a minty colour. It's kind of Polaroid almost. Like you can see the variegation when it comes out, when it develops, but it's not super obvious. It's not Polaroid, but it's also a bit Polaroid. I haven't had enough experience with the plant, but it's not super obvious when it unfills. It's not like an elbow, that's for sure. Right, the next two entries are similar, so please keep your eyes peeled and I will try and explain the difference because the next two entries do look the same but they are not. There is one key difference, I think, providing I've got this right. I really hope I have. But the next plant on the list I'd like to talk about, the next sport, is the Monstera White Tear. I hope that is the name it's running by. It might have similar names, it might not, I don't know. So this plant here is the Monstera White Tear. It, I think, its base is large form, I think. Definitely appears to be to me from the picture. This comes through... <laughs> It's really weird. I have something similar, which we'll get onto. It comes through kind of like a whisked up texture of white and green. It's really weird. Almost in the way sometimes that the mint presents. If you look at a mint monstera leaf close up, it's just really weird. It's like whisked together, right? It, it looks like that, but it, so it's not blocky or sectoral or anything like that in the variegation. It's a bit like actually a Florida ghost. When you get a Florida ghost leaf and it's, you know, super cream and it fades down, that process where it's half faded down, it's a bit like that. It's got a little bit more to it, but it's a bit like that. But really it's, it's more or less kind of white all over. That's generally the vibe of it. The difference between this and the next plant is, I do believe, the white parts that you see on this plant now are going to stay white. They're not going to fade down, okay? Just log that one thing. If you log nothing else, log that, okay? The white tier stays white. 
The next plant I'm now showing you is the Monstera White Monster. And I have a couple of these at the shop. You guys probably know this. If you've seen my videos, I've got one. So the White Monster kind of looks the same. You'd be forgiven for thinking it was the same plant, to be quite honest, looking at the photographs. It looks the same. I think it's large form, everything else. But when it hardens off over time, that leaf is going to go green. It's not really going to stay white. Now, in its defense, I've got some White Monster that stayed really white. So it doesn't harden off super quickly. It can linger. So it's not straight away that it fades down. The white will hang around a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it eventually turns green. And each leaf, it varies on how quickly it's going to do that by how much green is on it when it comes out. Few people have been asking me for updates on that plant. What I can tell you is that does seem to replicate its cuttings and it does seem stable. I haven't had super quick growth out of my plants. They were on a growth spurn, I think they've stopped, but it seems stable is what I can tell you so far. The next one, I only have this image to go off again. I do hope it's real and it's not made up because I'm I'm not sure what the tea is with this one. And if you know what the deal with this one is, please leave a comment down below and explain it to me. Because again, I've got a picture and I've got someone saying that's what this is. So do let me know. But this plant here is apparently the Monstera Ocean Mint. Again, I have this image to go off. I think it's large. I think it's large form, guys. Can't confirm, but I think it is. Again, if you know, let me know. <sighs> yeah, I just don't know if this is a sport or not. I'm going to be totally transparent with you. I don't know if it's just a variegated Monstera that's presenting a little bit weird and someone just called it something. I don't know. I really don't know. So either way, I wanted to leave that in here in case it ends up being a valid thing. And then you can look at the comments and then someone could be like, oh, this is a thing and whatever. So I wanted to put it in rather than leave it out. But FYI, I don't know what it is, but judging from the photograph, it just looks like variegation. I don't, I don't really get it, but maybe other photos would do it more justice. The next plant I'd like to talk about is, it's not controversial, but there are a lot of opinions on it. I think there's an awful lot of opinion on it. The next plant I want to talk about in the sport lift today is the Monstera Oceana. It's different. It's different. I did actually reach out to the the person that registered this plant, the grower, I think. I reached out to them about a month ago because I've been planning this video for quite a while. And they, I don't think they've seen my message on Facebook. Um, if that's you, by the way, check your inbox. But um, I've had to go off what I found on this plant because I couldn't talk to them. So apparently, this plant is tested and it's virus free. I don't know if it's been tested for every virus under the sun. The person that created this plant hopefully would have been able to confirm that for me, but I don't know. So all I know is that it's tested and virus free. Every leaf grows a bit differently. That is a characteristic of the plant. I'm assuming they've named it this because the the edges of the leaves can look a bit like ocean waves and it looks a bit like ocean froth and, and everything else. I can't tell if that's white or yellow variegation on this photograph. I might have shown you a different photograph where it's really obvious, so take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt, but I can't actually tell. The photograph I'm looking at, it looks yellow, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you more, but I think it would be fair to say that this one might be an acquired taste for a lot of you. I mean, it certainly is for me. It's not personally something I would go for, each to their own, of course. It is an accepted variety, though, so it goes on this list. Ah, I really want one of these. I really want one of these. This plant, think about what I said about the Thai when we talked about the Thai constellation a little while ago. I basically told you, yo, there's a dwarf form coming out. So this is the green version of that dwarf form. So it kind of behaves like large form in the way that it has a lot of fenestrations, a lot of holes very, very early on. I'm talking like leaves like this big. So my head is, honestly, I have the smallest head on planet Earth. It's not even funny. But I have a really small head. Maybe leaves about that size, but they have full fenestrations and holes. So if you see large form Monstera and you think, God, that looks so hot, but I just don't want that tree in my living room, you might like this. And not enough people know about this. I would love to have one of these, by the way. If anyone has one and they would like to sell one to me, I would love one. Either tie or not, to be honest. So that's what this basically is. I think it behaves like large form. When we talked about the tie constellation dwarf form, think of it as that, but with tie markings. So at some point you can get either. So it's whether you want the green or you want the tie version. But I want you to know that it exists. And I believe it's going round as Monstera Compacta. Uh, if it has other names, feel free to make a comment and... Tell me what else it's, you know, known as. Or dwarf form, I guess. But I really like that. I think it's really cute. I think it's really cute. I think it gives the best of both worlds if you want the, the cool jungleness, but you think that, you know, small form monster just the hearts, it's like, it's a bit boring, I need a bit more. 
that's an amazing plan. And I would love one of these. Again, I don't really care if it's green or not, to be honest. I'd absolutely love it. The next one is, it's kind of in here as an example to serve as, oh, hey, you can get Monstera where the leaves and the holes and the fenestrations differ a little bit, right? So I'm showing you this one, but it represents kind of any mutant in terms of like the shape, I guess. So this one here, again, I have one photograph, I apologize. This one here, I it, I mean, I'm gonna assume it's large form by looking at that, but it is a simply a green mutation. That's what I have here, green mutation. Yeah, it's just an example really of a distorted leaf formation that can probably occur. And I love this. I absolutely love this. This is a lot more skeletal looking. If you look at the, the fenestrations and the holes there, you'll see that the holes are like super pushed together. The fenestrations are super pushed together. You might look and think that's a regular monster, but it's really not when you compare it to a regular leaf, but you can see it's a lot different. So I actually really like that. I've never seen it sold or anything like that, but I really, really like it. Another example of a Monstera with different, um, you know, fenestrations and things like that. And again, there is more than this. There's a lot more than this. I know you're probably going to comment going, oh, you've missed out this. Oh, you've missed out that. I know there's a lot of variations, but the only other one I'm going to cover right now is the Brazilian common form because I think it's a little bit more affordable than some of the others actually. So this one, again, you might see a difference, you might not. I do have this one and I've noticed some big differences, which I will cover in a second. But the Brazilian common form, I haven't seen it aged, sorry, uh, mature, aged, whatever. But what I can say and what I've got on mine is there's a lot of fenestrations and the fenestration goes very, very, very close to the midrib, so that main vein running down the leaf. But I haven't seen any holes yet. Does that make any sense? Like the fenestrations go a lot deeper into the center of the leaf than a normal Monstera. So if you like that and you think, oh, it's just different enough, go for it. I might do that in my house, you know, I've been thinking about this. I might stick one of these on a pole, you know, a few of them and just grow it up because it's affordable enough for me to do that, to be honest. I want to say it's small form, but I don't know. If you know, please correct me if I am incorrect. Honestly, these plants are lovely, but I, I can't deny it. They grow pretty slow. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know, but they do grow quite slow. One thing I can definitely tell though, when you get a small form monster that has, you know, the heart-shaped leaf, so no fenestration, this one, when it's young, it, it looks very, very different to a normal heart-shaped monstera leaf, if that makes sense. So the normal one is probably more like that. You know what I mean? Something like that. I can't really make that shape with my hands. This one is more like that. It's much wider and it's like a fat heart shape. So you can actually still see that these are very different to a normal one, even when they're really juvenile. Like it doesn't take the fenestrations to be able to see it. I really like them. I do sell these. I have a few for sale if anyone's interested. I, there generally isn't much interest for them, by the way. I'm not trying to draw them up interest. People generally aren't really interested in these. I kind of like them and I think I might make a plant out of it, but yeah, they're quite slow. But again, this could be a good thing and not a bad thing. And I've started talking about this a lot recently. A plant growing slow could be a great thing for you. If you think to yourself, say you're putting, you know, a few bits of this around a pole, you might be doing what I'm doing and going to put it somewhere where you don't really want it to be growing off the pole or outgrowing itself in any way. You kind of just want it to look good. So with this growing really slowly, at least in my experience, it kind of helps, right? It's kind of a good thing. So please don't go thinking that, you know, if something's slow growing, it's bad. It's it doesn't have to be bad at all. It, what matters is what where you're putting the plant and your lifestyle, really. Do you know what I mean? That kind of concludes my list, guys, on what I've got for you for sports. Now, I don't have every single sport in there. I think there are others. Some of them are kind of bullshit. Some of them are legit. I haven't had the time to find everything. Then feel free to leave a comment below and tell me a little bit about them. And if there's other names that it's going by, so other people, if they read it, they can look it up and go, oh, cool, I'm, you know, I want that or I don't want that or whatever. Or maybe they, they need to ID a plan. Who knows? Please do let me know. And th there's stuff coming out all the time, I think. With stuff like this, it comes down to preference as to whether you care or not. It comes down to the honesty of the seller, especially if they're selling like something with one leaf that's really dubious to me. But it's just what you prefer. And the purpose of this video really was to just give you a blend of options when coming to not just variegated Monstera, but just Monstera. 
There are so many options and so many types. And honestly, Monstera are a fantastic, fantastic plant because they're just so tough. They can hold their own. They love low light. They love low light. It's part of the reason why they have those fenestrations and those holes. The plant does that to allow light to go to the bottom of the plant in the rainforest or wherever have you. That's why you get those splits and those holes. It's allowing light to pass down the plant. So they are very adept at low light and very adept at you know, giving themselves kind of what they need in that sense. Obviously, they have aerials as well that you have to watch out for with any type of Deliciosa, really, but it's just down to what you prefer. And if you don't prefer them, well, now you definitely know you don't prefer them. So I hope this video was very useful for you. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you could do so. My socials are down below. And I guess that's it for this video, guys. Please leave any comments, thoughts, discoveries, anything you like down below. I will be sure to read them. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.